technology that happened at the origin of life 3.8 billion years ago is still happening within us today. The fact that we are all connected through a tree and we are all descendants of a single common ancestor is really exciting to me. Life is unified and we are all a part of this big tree that we call the tree of life. To me, it is the most romantic notion that can come out of science. This is Batul. She's a researcher at Georgia Tech and is using the scientific tree of life to travel back in time and even resurrect parts of that ancient past, bringing the origin of life back to life. This is my whole world almost. You know, this is where I do the thing that I'm really passionate about in life, that I'm doing research, the basic research. I think science and art are really close together, and this is something that reminds me what I'm doing here, the tree of life, that the, the notion that all life is connected through a tree and we are just in the branches. We are descendants of our ancestors, but we can, there's no way for us to you know, go back in like real time machine, go back to the past. At least right now, we don't have anything. But we can do that in a molecular level in the laboratory. Batul uses DNA sequences from different organisms and a mathematical algorithm to travel back in time. She's able to turn back the clock all the way to the first DNA sequences at the origin of life. Batul constructs those sequences in the lab and inserts them into modern day bacteria, resurrecting genes that have been extinct for billions of years. And then we can literally synthesize in the laboratory and like put, put these DNA sequences in little tubes and then introduce them inside the bacteria and then see how bacteria is actually adapting and if bacteria remembers its past. So I'm waking the sleeping beauty, that's what I call my ancient genes, really, really old, but very beautiful. Each dot on these plastic plates is made up of millions of bacteria, and each dot proves that ancient genes can live today. Especially talking to a room full of people that inspired me to do what I do is very humbling. I, I, I will talk about an experimental system that I set up in the lab in order to study historical contingency. And first off, the question that I am interested in is why is life the way it is? Why the molecules that we see today, and particularly my interests are proteins, are functioning the way they are? Were there other alternatives to their function? Are these functions the only way that we could observe them? Or if there were alternatives, what were they and why didn't that take place? 